All right, well, Andy, thank you for joining us. Uh, in your panel, you're talking about uh, a, a new role that uh, you'd like uh, journalists to embrace uh, with, with social media. Uh, and, and you mentioned the term of uh, the, the concept of journalists helping slow down the conversation. So uh, tell us a little bit about what is uh, your, your, your vision for uh, journalists' engagement in, uh, in, in this world of uh, social media and constant noise. Well, I think most people would agree that the news cycle has sped up exponentially in recent decades. Uh, first through 24-hour news cycle on broadcast and cable, then um, online publishing and now with social media. And uh, there can be this feedback loop that exists between all three of them that can cause people to just keep talking and talking and talking, both members of the public and people on air, and members of the journalism community, um, without it being productive. And uh, what I want more people to do is start thinking about playing a role on social media to try to slow down the conversation. So when we see uh, uh, online communities circulating photos of two young men in Boston that might be suspects, and then you see um, the New York Post running with that as well, are, are, were there opportunities in between that or even before all that where we can talk about what the potential impact of doing this is, what are the pros and cons, um, how you should be investigating things correctly, um, how, how can we reserve judgment before putting people's lives and reputations at risk. And so I think um, we just need to play this role where we acknowledge we're not always going to get it right the first time around, so to proceed with caution. As opposed to being silent, which is uh, what, what you said, that uh, uh, media is still imagining itself as a one-way street thing and, uh, and rather wait for the conversation to do its own thing and staying yeah. quiet until they have the report. Well, there are times when news organizations will report something and then when they realize it might be wrong, uh, especially when it comes online, they may say nothing about it until they're absolutely sure one way or another. Another, whereas I would rather them be upfront about acknowledging that there are conflicting reports, and explain to people what the problem is, what might the issue, what the issue might be with their sourcing or whatever. And so, uh, because in the meantime, there's still going to be people out there retweeting what you said before. And your 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 panel turned out to be incredibly topical with. Uh, uh, the bombings at Boston on, on Monday, and uh, you were, if I understand correctly, you were this morning uh, uh, confirming that the Twitter account of one individual was uh, associated to one of the Boston well, bombings. What I was trying to do was to confirm if any of these reported Twitter accounts could be linked to any of the suspects. And there were a few hoaxes out there, but then there was this other one that was very promising because um, I went through his entire feed of over a thousand tweets. Um, there were discussions about the college he went to. Uh, there was discussions about Chechnya. There was discussions about wrestling. There were pictures uploaded by the user that seemed to have the same person standing with people. Um, and when you looked at the people he at replied and followed originally on Twitter, they were having conversations today about how they knew the suspect. And so. Does that mean that Twitter account is confirmed? I'm always leery of using the word confirmed, but you know, I'm 95% sure it's going to be him. And this is a good uh, uh, case, a good example of, uh, of this uh, topic of, of how to engage in inf with information right. like this. Well, right? that's what I did today because I, I saw a lot of people circulating these other Twitter accounts, much more than they were circulating the one that I believe is probably correct. And so I had to keep up with that and tell people, hang on a second, there are a lot of reasons for us to be suspect of these. We found this one here, we don't know for a fact it's true, but uh, we're working on it and maybe you can help me work on it too. And following this illustration, we have uh, uh, the the work that people at Reddit and 4chan have been doing, also try to find the Boston bombers. And this is a good, also a good case scenario to talk about uh, the the role of uh, of uh, what what journalists can contribute uh, to to this. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, just the, the 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 situation with Reddit and the the morals here? Well, you know. Reddit actually has a decent track record when it comes to investigating things. Uh, they, they've profusely apologized for this particular case. It's really unfortunate how it played out. Um, I saw very few people in the news business even acknowledging what Reddit was doing. I mean, there were some that saying, you know, Reddit is crowdsourcing, but they didn't actually check out what was going on and scrutinize it. Or if they did, they didn't say much about it. And so I felt the need to go publicly and acknowledge that this collection of photos existed and express some concerns. 
you know, I, I basically said it's entirely possible that one of these people could be the right person, but we just don't know yet. Uh, we just don't know. And so um, I think whether it's Reddit or any other group online, whether they have a good track record or a bad track record, you have to take some of it with a grain of salt until your journalistic instincts really kick in. And I think it's important also to point out that uh, journalism cannot get on its high horse when you have, for example, the AP uh, that allegedly also confirmed the arrest of one of the bombers. Right. And it wasn't so. Everyone screws up sometimes. So I think we, we could use a bit more humility about it and not cast aspersions at one particular platform or another. Because everyone's going to get it wrong at some point and everyone's going to rise to the occasion at some point. So let's just get the job done. Nathan? I was going to say, you, you mentioned... Um uh, during the first question here, and then also during the panel, the, nece the necessity to slow down the conversation. I mean, how is that possible when you know you've got millions of people on Twitter across the world yeah. tweeting, you know, tons of Easily. tweets per second? It's easy. I did that this whole morning because I had I've got ninety thousand people following me, uh, some of whom were sharing the incorrect Twitter accounts, and now I was able to tell them, hold on, this one looks more of potential. Let's dig into this. I'll get back to you in a bit. You know, uh, people are willing to um, take their time and not necessarily retweet something if they've heard you say, we're suspicious about this. Uh, I, you know, I saw a lot of people writing, I don't consider this confirmed until A. Carvin says it is, which is, you know, it's very kind of them to say that. But I think it's showing that people are hesitating. They recognize that, that some things need to be slowed down sometimes because we just make the situation worse when you create that feedback loop between mainstream media and social media. And so I think pausing and being more circumspect about what we're reporting, whether we're professional journalists or citizen journalists, is something we all need to take more seriously. Do you think that's magnified much more after big outlets uh, fumble news stories or make you know make these periodic mistakes? I, I, I think when these mistakes are made, it, it gives us an opportunity to discuss uh, ways of solving it. But I think you know we're all a bit ADHD when it comes to working in journalism and so it'll get our attention for a while and then we'll just move on to the next story and what I'm trying to say here is we can't afford to move on to the next story we need to figure this out now before the next disastrous breaking news story happens so we don't make mistakes so. all, right, all right well Andy thank you very much thanks my pleasure